Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com and today it's all about dehydrating onions. Yes, I'm going to share with you the inexpensive way of dehydrating onions that everyone can do. And I'm going to show you the convenient way of dehydrating onions that many of you can do. Well, it is always my joy and my pleasure to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. And that includes many ingredients. The number one is always that God loves you. He always has. He always will. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love for you is everlasting, more than anything we could ever comprehend. And, and so without understanding that, sometimes our days can just get muddled. And I want to help you clarify your purpose by understanding God's love. The other ingredients to that recipe for excellent health is food. <laughs> and yes, onions is one of those foods in the biblical diet and also in all throughout scripture. So let's get started. But before we do, be sure and hit like, subscribe, and I look forward to reading your comments. I have the privilege also of teaching you more about God's recipe for excellent health when you join us at the biblicalnutritionacademy.com website. That's where we post all of our classes on fasting and eating and prayer. Three elements that as a Christian we need to understand those disciplines so that we can enjoy so much more life than we ever thought possible. What I have here is two different bowls of onions and I went ahead and I got them all out of the garden. We were actually gone for two weeks on vacation. When I came back, my garden had pretty much dehydrated. And so we pretty much, our onions were at a standstill. Otherwise, I would have liked these to be double this size. And that would have been a lot better and a little bit more you know, results from our work. So I picked them and then I cleaned them up and took off all the outer layers and the dirt. And now we have two big bowls full of onions to process. Now you can process these in several different ways. And I'm gonna give you three options on how to process the onions. We're gonna talk about the processors, the food processor and the slicer shredder. But first of all, if you don't have these really nice appliances, then just go ahead and use a knife. Now when we are dehydrating onions, it doesn't really Really matter how we chop them up we just need them to be somewhat more of a uniform size and shape but if we make a mistake there is no problem with that so I can really just slice you know just slice them however I want I don't have to make them beautiful I don't have to make them you know all the same shape whether they're a circle or a triangle or whatever I kind of just want the same thickness so however you chop them up, we're looking for the same thickness so that they can dehydrate at the same time timing. So we've got some of those and we could just keep chopping those. Now you can go ahead and dice them, but I prefer to dice them after they're dried. It's just a lot easier. I really just start with them. When I'm doing it by hand, I just make slices and then I will just kind of break them up when I put them on the different sheets. Looks like I had a little bit more of the skin left. And so I would just break these up. Now, if you're like me and you're going to tear up from, chice, from chopping onions, you might want to freeze these for an hour first and that will interrupt that and you will not have any problems with chopping onions and crying at the same time. So just chopping them with a, a board and a knife is process number one. Now for me, I just love to use machines because it just speeds up the process so quickly. So if you already have a Bosch mixer, there are two options you can use. One is the food processor and it, I'm, you have on top of this, when you open it up, I'm using the slicer. That is one of the cutting options that you have with this. So I'm using the slicer. I could use the dicer, but uh, I kind of like sometimes to use the slicer instead. This is our slicer shredder. There's two different options here as well. I'm just showing you this one. It opens up and similar to the food processor, it has different blade options. So I'm gonna be using the larger side of this blade option. It has a large and a small as far as mincing. And we're gonna do that. So for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one. If you're using, there we go, all locked in. If you're using the food processor, it would go up here on the tower. 
All right, so now all we have to do, we do not even have to slice these onions. We just put them in and let them process. Okay, so that was the slicer shredder. And then I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the, the food processor with the slicing blade. The slicing blade is actually faster than the dicing blade when it comes to onions. Well, I finished chopping up all of the onions and I must say of the two processes I originally was going to use this to be my quote dicer but it proved to be a little bit more labor intensive because the onions have so much moisture and so instead the slicer shredder or I could have used a slicer on here versus the small dicer blade so the bottom line is the slicer works a lot better than the dicer blade now when it comes to dehydrating you can blanch your onions first, and that is just a quick, you know, one minute in some boiling water, then in some cold water, and they will actually dehydrate faster. I don't like doing an extra step. I like simple, get it done, move on to something else, so I don't do that step. But you do have that option. Now, two ways of dehydrating. One is in your own oven. Now, I will tell you, slicing up all these onions, I have just now had a complete sinus cleanse because I was tearing up so bad, I was not going to show you how bad on video. So, I was like, okay, this is definitely waterworks today. So, the main thing is try to get them um, a flat layer if you can. And I would put this in the oven at about... Our goal is 125. Depending on how your oven works, you may have to maybe set it at the lowest temperature and then maybe leave the door open just to crack, but you just wanna keep an eye on it. So you can definitely do this in the oven. About 10 hours is what you're looking at. When you do it in the oven though, you do wanna keep an eye on it. So maybe every, um, once you get past six hours, then I would start checking on it. In the dehydrator, which I have here, which is the Filter Pro Dehydrator, I've worked with many of them. I've done videos with many of them. And this is kind of the one that I really love the most. First of all, its first name is filter. So it has a filter that the air comes through before it blows all over your food, which I thought, well, that's a good idea. And it has a computerized you know, setting for the temperature. So I already, I had it set right at 125. And then I can set my hours as well. I don't worry so much about hours because dehydrated food is going to finish when it's dehydrated and it's not going to burn in a dehydrator. I love things that are just going to work on their own. As it says in Proverbs 31, she gets her maids working. Well, this is a maid. This is a maid. And I want all my maids working for me so I don't have to do it. I know in my grandma's day, they would just dehydrate outside in the sun. Yeah, that's not me either. So I don't know about you. So the Filter Pro dehydrator... I just turned it on. You have trays, you have thin trays, and you have thick trays, depending on whatever you're trying to dehydrate. Now on these trays, I actually have on more of the mesh strainer because some of my onions might be a little bit small and I don't want them to go through. If I was dehydrating bigger particles of food, I wouldn't need this, and then therefore the airflow would be a little bit quicker. Pretty much, I will cycle these trays. I will you know, rearrange them. After we get to about four hours, and then every hour I might go through and rearrange them, but pretty much they dehydrate uh, pretty evenly. So I'm very happy with this. So we can go ahead and just, again, just put out a nice flat layer. I don't care that it looks, you know, picture perfect. I'm not making a cookbook with this. I just want a nice fairly flat layer, but I have ended up with uh, hunks sometimes or you know big piles and they still dehydrate fine dehydrating is like um you know those books out there that say you know this doing this for dummies you know well dehydrating is definitely you, you you don't have to have a lot of technical knowledge you don't have to have a lot of cooking you know skills you just put it in the dehydrator and let it dehydrate especially if you're using a dehydrator of some kind because they do the work it doesn't burn it just will keep going until it's all dry so we'll check these when i think they're almost dry and we'll look in them look in on them then so i'm just going to fill up all these trays 
and then okay this is the most important thing which is why I don't like doing this in my oven is I'm gonna set this dehydrator in the garage some people will even plug it in outside because your entire house if it's inside the house is going to smell like onions you also do not dehydrate another food at the same time because <laughs> it will taste like onions and so like if you were to do peaches and onions in the same dehydrator at the same time oh my that would be awful so only onions at a time and then um, put it somewhere where your family is not going to be quite upset with you for dehydrating onions in the house even in the garage we're going to smell it but it'll keep the smell out there yes yeah, so even on the back porch would be better it might get rid of all the deer in the neighborhood I don't know if deer like onions all right so I'm gonna finish filling my trays and then we'll check on how well they're doing Well, our onions have definitely been dehydrating all night long. And so I wanted to show you how they're doing. I ended up having to fill them more than just a thin layer because I had so many onions. I actually had to make a large amount. Now you may have noticed I did my red onions with my white onions. I just do that. I don't separate them. Obviously you might want to separate yours because they do have different flavors. I'm kind of doing a mix of flavors. And I usually take these trays and I will just empty them straight into a big bowl. You hear how crispy they are? You can just hear them. Actually, this right now would be your perfect you know, dried onion for salads. Yeah, and you would have a really good flavor. So you could just use them just like this, right on a dry, uh, dried like this on a salad for a crunchy topping and you'd save yourself the calories and the unnecessary um, you know, breadcrumbs by the, buying the ones in the store. Mm, boy, that does have a really good flavor. Probably shouldn't have started that while I'm on a video. <laughs> you should have waited and enjoyed that later. Yeah, that is totally a really good flavor. Now, what we can do with this, just need to get them all off my sheet. And then, so I have, I ended up with eight trays, so I have quite a lot of onions. So I have them here in my bowl. I can just crunch them up with my hand like this and just end up with some, some minced onions, dried onions, because maybe sometimes I wanna cook and have a little bit bigger texture of the onion as they rehydrate, whether it's in soups or you know just different maybe spaghetti sauce or something like that, or you're, you're, you're browning some meat and you want a little bit more of a obvious onion texture in your meat. So definitely I could just do this by crumbling it up in my hands and then putting it in one of my canning jars. Normally I would use a scoop for this. So yeah, I could definitely just do it this way and store it. And it's just gonna look so pretty in my, in my cabinet. Sometimes I get more excited about the looks of my pantry than I do about cooking. And so there we'd have, we'd have our own minced onions. We, we did it ourselves. So if you ever have onions, especially organic onions, go on sale, then grab them and bring them home, dehydrate them and have them store it up. Especially because the price of food is continuing to go up. Anytime you run across a sale, even if a few of them in the bag are going bad, so what, buy the bag, bring them home, cut out the bad parts and dehydrate the rest. So that is definitely one way of storing them. The other way is to go ahead and make an onion powder. That's typically what I do more of. Now I told you I had these sheets in here, so I can just pull this out. Sounds like church bells in here. And then just wipe the onion straight into my bowl. And I will just keep doing this until I have every one of the sheets done. Every one of the trays.
Okay, there we have our big bowl. I'm now going to go ahead and powder most of these. Let me go ahead and finish filling up my, my jar, and then I'm gonna take the rest and powder them. I still have some onions in the garden, so when I just want fresh onions, I can just go out and pull one up for a recipe. And then sometimes I will just go ahead and do the chopping of the onions, the slicing like we did the first step, and then freeze one to either a half cup to in one bag or up to one cup. And then I have some fresh, ready to go onions to use in a recipe. So several different ways, basically three ways I could do them frozen, just chopped up, or I can do them dehydrated, uh, either in the minced form or in the powdered form. So I'm gonna take this, put it in my dry blade Vitamix container. You could use a food processor, you could use that other hand immersion food processor that I use in a lot of recipes. And we're just gonna pop that on our Vitamix or whatever machine you are using. All right, there we go. And <laughs> definitely onion powder. And we would just pour that in our bottle and label it as such and then store that. So it certainly looked like a lot in there and it doesn't look like much here. So remember when you're cooking, this is you only really want no more than a tablespoon because a tablespoon is gonna be almost a half of an onion. So think about that when you're cooking. You saw how much we put in each one of those containers and there we go, how to dehydrate onions. I just wanna thank you for letting me do one of my own household projects in front of you and let you learn at the same time. I always want to invite you into my kitchen so together we can learn God's recipe for excellent health. And it always includes his love for you. And his foods are an example of how much he loves you. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like, subscribe, the bell, stay connected so we can continue to build a relationship. And together we can have the confidence in the kitchen, the confidence in understanding how much God loves you, and you know the confidence of knowing that you can have better health exactly the way God des designed it. Thanks for watching.